Yes, everybody, welcome back to Five. This is The Secret Scout. We are going to be talking about some of the best up-and-coming young players. Today, we're looking at attacking players, and we are looking specifically, to start off with at least, at Jadon Sancho. Anton, talk to me about Jadon Sancho. I've got a lot of time for Jadon. One, because he, he's from the same area that I'm from, in Peckham. Um, so to see someone from where I was brought up doing things that he's doing, it, it means a lot to me. Um, you know, and... and Watching him, for, watching him trying to fulfill, fulfill his potential, you know, it's exciting. He's a player who, when he was at Dortmund, game after game, churning out numbers that are astronomical, you know. Um, hit a bit of a blip at, at Man United, um, but not all the blame can go to him. He's in a team that don't play for him at times. Mm -hmm. um, he's in a team where he has to do more defensive work than he's, he's used to doing, which takes away from his at attacking attributes. Um, and also in a league where it's very, very different. I think people seem to forget that that because he's English, you know, that he should just be able to come into the Premier League and hit the ground running and deal with the pace of the game. He's not played in the Premier League. This is the first year he's played in the Premier League, by the way. He's played in a, a competitive league in, in the Bundesliga, but it's different to the Premier League. So give him some time. And I've always said it, if he gets the minutes on the pitch, you will see a different set, uh, Jane and Sancho to what you've seen so far. Yeah, I think recently we've seen him sort of start to really take the ball by the horns. For me, he was playing him off for United. Uh, I think he's really started to grow into his role. Perhaps with not having the other options, maybe knowing that he's, he's going to be playing week in, week out. But you're right, up until his move to United, I don't know if you've heard of these two players, but um, Lewandowski and Messi, they were the only two people with more goal involvements than this young man uh, over the two seasons that preceded this one. Um, in the Premier League this season, um, stats correct at time of us recording it, 146 progressive carries, 61 shot creating actions, 34 successful dribbles, 26 chances created and wasn't even playing well for the most part of that either. That just tells you that the, the, the tools that he's got in them two feet. Well, let's have a look at his tools then, because I think this is going to shock a few people. You'd expect, obviously, we know the pink is the attacking, the blue is the defending. I'm not even going to touch on the blue. Blocks is up there, as you would expect. I'm thinking we're probably going to see more pressures as this new United system gets used to Ralph Ragnick. Everyone, I think, would expect the pink to be the highest, but for me, he's a playmaker, so he's, he's in-possession stuff is what excites me. Dribbles completed, progressive carries, and we're going to look at those in a bit as well. Progressive passes, and then, of course, obviously into his attacking, shot-creating actions, expected assists. Um, total shots, though, extremely low. Yeah, I mean, as I said he, he, earlier, he's in a team that defends more than, than attacks at the moment in Man United team. He's used to playing a team that, that has 70, 80% of the ball. You know, and, and that's probably the reason why his total shots. And, and not just that we're forgetting, he sees an assist as a goal. That's how he, he's um, evolved his game. Assist is a goal, just like a defender will. You see Kylian, he block a shot. It's almost like scoring a goal. You know, that's how he sees assists. That's why his goal involvements were up there with, with the Messi's and Lewandowski's. You know, um, but I think when you look at his progressive carries, for me as a defender, playing with him, I would love that. And the reason why is because he gives you time to have a breather. If you've been defending for a long time, long periods, you get him on the ball. He takes the ball out of the pitch, you get a breather. You can get out of the pitch and defend where you want to defend, where I, well, where I like to defend, which is higher up. You know, and I think having someone like that in your team is very much needed because he gives you a progressive carry, um, not just to give you a breather, but to also create something. And the fact that he's got them two aspects in him is fantastic. Let's have a look at his progressions then and where he actually stacks up in relation to the rest of the world. Because it's literally elite, Anton. He's right up there. Carries into the penalty area on the right-hand side there. And as you can see, he's high. the higher and more to the right, the more they're doing. And he's basically top right corner. Vinicius is way higher than I expected him to be in this. You, of course you're seeing Messi, of course you're seeing Neymar, of course you're seeing Bernardo Silva in the mix. But Jadon Sancho is right in the mix amongst all of those players. In the, probably in the top five in both, I would say. Of fantastic. course. It is fantastic. And that's the cage player in him from being on the streets <laughs> of Peckham. Love the ball with his feet, can carry, can beat people. You know, and, and so when you look at it and... 
Vinicius up there, he's playing a team that plays for him, yep. by the way. When you're in a team that plays for you, you're going to be up there, especially when you've got the ability as well. I just want to see Man United play more to his strengths and get him up the pitch, you know, and that starts from the whole team. Man United are playing too deep at the moment, which don't allow him to play in a position where he can, he can be effective. You know, the minute that Man United's back line starts playing at the halfway line, you will see a different Jadon Sancho. And he will start to creep and come up into these areas around there. I truly do believe that. Let's have a look where they're actually taking place then on the pitch next. And of course, um, we've switched his flank. He started off as a left winger. He went to Germany, became a right winger. Uh, has come back to England, playing on the left again, smashing it on the left again. Yeah, and you look at the, the pinks where his uh, progressive carries are. It's, it's progression in a game for me. If you can carry the ball and be progressive in that carry, that means you're always trying to hurt the, 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 the team you're playing against. You're always trying to penetrate the, the team that you're playing against. And that's what this boy is about. You know, he looks more comfortable on the left. That's why, and he's playing more on the left. That's why there's more on the left-hand side. Mm -hmm. But he can also do it on the right. You know, you look at the difference in the, the normal carries to the, to the progressive carries, it's chalk and cheese, you, you can't even compare it, you know, and, and I think that tells you everything you need to know about, about Jaden. Yeah. His first He's thought, going one direction. His first thought is to hurt you. Yeah. So have a look at the next one that we've got then, because this is where his assists are coming from. Um, we've got his assists, obviously, most of them coming in, in the 18-yard box, but his progressive passing as well, something that I think people really not too sure that you see that too much of, of Jaden Sancho. Last episode, we saw a lot from Jude Bellingham. You're seeing a lot more of those because of the type of player he is. Sancho is someone who looks to dribble first, but he's still got some really good vision and some really good passes in it. Of course he has. And if you go back to when he was at Dortmund, I'm telling you, these assists of, of uh, progressive passes, you'll see there'll be a lot, more, a lot more yellow than there is pink. I'm telling you that now. And again, it states back to Everyone's looking at Jaden. Why aren't Jaden this? Why aren't Jaden doing that? Look at the team that he's in. I know it's hard for you to hear that, but look at the team that he's in. <laughs> you know, when you're playing in a team that sits back all the time, that defends first, you're not going to get the Jaden with 20 assists like what he was at Dortmund and the reasons why Man United pay that money for him. You know, but then to pay that money for him and know he's going through a stage where he knows he's coming up at 60 minutes every week, it's hard to get them numbers up. But if you were to show me this graph, show me this, this picture here, and there wasn't, there was more white than there was pink, I'd be worried. The pink's telling me that he's doing the right thing. And at some point, people are going to start putting his chances away and his assists are going to go through the roof. No coincidence over the last couple of months, Manchester United have created more chances than anyone that's not Liverpool. Uh, Jaden started to look a lot better, uh, and I'm sure that's going to continue. Hopefully, it continues all the way through the rest of the season. I've got two more for you. First one's Cole Palmer. This kid can play as a striker, he can play as an attacking midfielder, or he can play as a winger. And because he plays for it, I'm not going to say anymore. <laughs> silky, silky, silky player. <laughs> you know, Mares uh, like though his stature. You know, um, the way that he. he he chops the ball. He shows you it with a chop. But the reason why defenders go for it, for it is because they know he's got the quality on his left foot to whip the ball into the top corner. You know, but the way he, he, he keeps control of the ball, the way he always tries to hurt defences, always try to have an end product. And obviously that's, that's the, the coaching from Pep with a player like this. Go and hurt, go and hurt. Because that's the way Pep likes his team to play. You know, you, you go for the jugular at all times. And this boy's got that. The fact that he moves so well, he glides past people, but he's got a fantastic eye for goal as well. Yeah, Cole Palmer already at four goals, two assists for Manchester City so far this season. Six goal contributions have come in just over 500 minutes. Definitely going to be another nightmare for everybody. That's... Yeah, he is. And by the way, good for England as well. Another talent coming through and someone who could, can hopefully wear the England shirt for many years to come. Someone else that's um, been doing bits is Harvey Elliott. Now, this is another one. The data at the start of the season told us this kid was going to be a nightmare. Um, and what we're seeing of him, he looks like he's a nightmare. Yeah, I mean, I speak to Jordan Henderson quite a lot. Um, and one thing that comes out from, from Jordan is this boy has got the mentality. He's got the right mentality. He's got the right group of people around him. 
that makes sure that he stays on the straight and narrow. And he's someone that can go to the very, very top, you know, um, a Liverpool fan through and through. But what he's come and producing on the pitch, making his debut for Fulham at 16 and getting a move to, to a massive club like Liverpool and going on the pitch at Anfield and it not phasing him. That tells you the mentality that this boy has got. I watched him against Burnley at Anfield when he when he done that lovely reverse pass, which then led to the assist. You know, um, not many players at his, at his age see that. Mm. You know, but he saw it and was able to execute it. And the fact that he can go in to a Liverpool squad, which has got arguably some of the best attacking players and the best midfielders in in the world, to go in there and and stake a claim that them positions and them shirts are his tells you everything you need to know about this young man. We spoke a lot about progression and this series features a lot of data and, and progression, especially for attacking players, is something that you want to go. But the next one on top of progression is your shot creating actions because with no shots, there's no goals. He's third best in the Liverpool side per night for shot creating actions. He's only behind Thiago and Trent. Now, if that's not telling you someone's getting on the pitch and creating for his teammates... This is what he's getting out there and doing. Exactly. He's always got his head up looking to penetrate. Always looking to penetrate with a pass. You know, and, and when you've got players like Mane, Salah, who are willing to run without the ball, this young man's in his element. And the fact that he's behind them two players who are known, by the way, for their passing ability. Thiago, done it all his career. Trent Alexander, Got every club in the box, can play every type of pass. And he's third behind them and played less minutes, by the way, and had a bad injury. And he's third behind them. Tells you, I'm telling this, this, this kid, and the fact that he's captain Jordan is t- telling me and saying that he's got everything to go to the top. Most importantly, the right mentality, which we say a lot on this show, it's about mentality. Because when we're talking about young kids, you can have all the ability in the world, but if you're mentally not right, your mentality is not right, where are you going to go? Because to play in front of hundreds of thousands of people and millions of people around the world who all have an opinion, by the way, on you, you are, your mind has to be right to be able to deal with that. Yep. There we go. There's three very, very, very Premier League based as well. Exciting talents that we've got that are playing in the attack. Cheers for all the comments on the last video. Get in the comments. I want to know what position and your suggestions. Who do you think we need to be looking at next? Uh, who do you want the data on? Cheers to Anton. Cheers for you lot for watching at home. Make sure to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.